We'll stand, please. This is the uh, regular meeting, of Lake Charles Harbor and Terminal District, December 19, 2022. Uh, call on Mr. Prelo. You bow your head. Dear Lord, we ask your blessing on this board, our port, and the people who depend upon it. We ask that you guide us in our decisions that they are for the good of those we serve. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to introduce Mary Jo Bales and ask her to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Board encourages public comments and questions regarding all agenda items. Persons wishing to do so should complete a speaker's card, which is at the entrance to the boardroom. When speaking or asking questions on an agenda item, one should, in addition to completing the card, come to the microphone, be recognized, and provide your name, address, and phone number. Comments by individuals will be limited to three minutes. And I want to welcome and thank everyone for being here. And that brings us to the agenda. The first item is the approval of the November 21, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Mr. Mr. President, I move uh, adoption of the minutes of a November 21st regular meeting. I second. Okay, motion by Mr. Creelo, second by Mr. Darbone. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Thank opposed? If I may jump in, Mr. Chairman, I think it's best if there isn't going to be an attempt to amend the agenda for tonight, we do that now. We don't need to take anything out of order, but if we're going to amend the agenda, I think we should go ahead and do that right. now. Okay. Is there a motion to amend the agenda? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to amend the agenda on the submission from Stevedore Companies to add that uh, upon receipt uh, authorizing the Executive Director to approve the submissions of J.J. Flanagan and Lake Charles Stevedore. Okay. So, and basically what you're saying is subject, subject to, to receipt prior to December 31st if it's submitted and all the documents are uh, provided as required. And that's, uh, that's in reference to submission 2022-065? Correct. So yes, just so everybody's clear tonight, the board will approve the three stevedore and companies listed and also grant the executive director the authority to approve the submissions from Lake Charles Stevedores and J.J. Flanagan upon receipt and um, a check that all the documents are submitted properly and that everything is in order. The executive director will have authority to approve it then. Okay? I second that. All right. And Motion that's got to be unanimous approval by the board. Motion by Mr. Creelo, second by Mr. Dorbone. Can that be, a, is, that, is there a motion to be adopted? Do we have a unanimous con, a vote on that? Yeah, we need a vote. Okay. So, all right, all, all in, in favor. favor. Aye. Aye. And uh, that's recognized as being a unanimous vote of the members present. All right, then returning to the regular agenda or the where we were on the agenda, that brings us to submission 2022-061, establishing the regular me meetings of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Commissioner. Um, we, e each year at this month, in the month of December, we submit the board meeting dates for the 2020, the following year, for your approval. Uh, approvals needed to establish the date, time, and place of the regular board meeting minute board meetings of the commissioners of the Lake Charles Harbor Terminal District. Uh, typically, it's on the fourth Monday of each month. There are a couple of dates that are moved due to holiday, but you have in your packet the schedule for your approval. Just as a point of order, do we need to actually dictate the dates into the minutes? No. Okay. It's, it, it, this will be part of the approved, you know, once this is approved, it will be part of your submission. Right. Do we have a motion? Yeah, Mr. President, 
I make a motion to approve submission 2022-061. A second. Motion by Mr. Darbone, second by Mr. Ms. Bales. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And submission 2022-062, approving revisions to the tariff 013, Mr. Purcell. Sure. Staff requests approval to revise the district's tariff number 013 for items number 650 and 721. The dockage rates and security surcharge rate revisions bring the district into line with the members of the Gulf Seaports Marine Terminal Conference rates for 2023. Staff requests approval to increase the tariff rates for item number 375, Twick Escort Service, and item number 390, charges for Seafarer Center. Uh, essentially, as part of the Gulf Seaports Marine Terminal Conference, uh, we adjust the dockage to be in line with the approved Gulf Seaports Marine Terminal Conference rates uh, for uh, dockage and security fees. In addition, we're requesting an increase associated with the TWIC escorts and the charges to the vessels for the Seafarer Center. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll move adoption of submission 2022-062. I second. Okay, motion by Mr. Creelo, second by Mr. Darbone to adopt 2022-062. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, brings us to 2022-063. Uh, Mr. Self. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Staff recommends that the Board of Commissioners authorize an agreement for owner's representative and inspection services with River West for various port construction projects during fiscal year 2023. Um, as you recall, River West has been providing field tech, uh, owner representative services, QA, QC work on several of the port's capital projects and repair projects. Due to uh, the Hurricane Lauren, Hurricane Delta, we're undertaking numerous projects simultaneously, and they provide a critical uh, service for the port and getting us back. Um, and this agreement will allow for that service. Do we have a motion? I make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, to, for submission 2022-063 to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Darbone, second by Mr. Prudham. Any discussion? Uh, I have a question on it. Nick, the uh, amount of this uh, construction contract is about double what it normally is with River West. Is this going to be recovered through FEMA? Yes, sir. And it's uh, it's about double, uh, but if you remember, we had to come back to you about mid-year last year, so it's actually very close to what the total was. Good. And I failed to point that out. And it, it's all re reimbursable by yeah. FEMA. Yes, sir, as okay. we're submitting our request to GOSIP and the other funding sources, we submit these as well. For FEMA projects. Right. Yeah. I mean, if they work on one that's not a non-FEMA project, say that's two right. and three, that would not be, right? That's correct. Right. I take it the increase in the need for staff is due to the FEMA reserve oh, yeah. for the most part. So yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to be clear that yeah. some of the fee is no. not going to be reimbursed because of do you have an idea what the breakdown is? Do you have an estimate? Is on the majority of this 405? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the majority is FEMA. Actually, this year we actually did a very thorough, detailed schedule of all of our capital projects and resource allocations. Because we went over last year, we were trying to avoid that this year and got more detailed into our breakdown, which I was trying to add them up as we were talking. And we've got 16 that are actually in construction now, and I would say only about two of them are not. Any further questions or additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is submission 2022-064. Uh, Mr. Self? A staff requests the Board of Commissioners to authorize the Executive Director to amend resolution 2018-020 for engineering services with Meyer Associates, Inc., for the rail relocation at West Salier Street. Again, as you're aware, um, the port entered into a CEA with 
uh, Louisiana DOTD associated with the Nelson Road extension and bridge project, whereby we're responsible for moving the rail. The original estimate for uh, Meyer and Associates was based upon, I think it was in 2017 or 18, yeah, 2018. This will be amending uh, that amount based upon the bid for the project, based on the fee curve for engineering services. And it's reimbursed by LADOTD, by the way, 100%. Uh, <laughs> right. We have a motion. So moved. I second. All right, motion by Mr. Freedom, second by Mr. Darbone. Uh, discussions or questions regarding the submission? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes. All right, that brings us to Submission 2022-065 as amended. If, and if I may, this is just a bit of housekeeping. Um, Mr. Prudham, just for the record, Mr. Prudham uh, arrived after we amended the agenda. Yeah, I, I wanted to let, let uh, Michelle know that we made a quorum, huh? We so did, we yes, had, sir. But be, the, any amendment to the agenda has to be unanimous. It was unanimous in its approval. But since you came in late, I'd just like for on the record, to ask you if you have any objection to the amendment that was made, we added two stevedoring companies to the list of those None. that are going to be approved. None. None. Just, just so that we're clear, yeah. because you're going to be voting. So, proceed, Mr. Chairman. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Submission 2022. I'm sorry. Dash 065. Mr. Okay. Uh, so, on you. Uh, yes. Uh, approval of the, of the board is sought to enter into a five-year stevedoring permit expiring on December 31st, 2027. Uh, before. Uh, the deadline we received, or even to date, we've only received three of the five permits. The three that we've received are from Federal Marine Terminals, Gulfstream Marine, and Sonic Stevedores. Um, the uh, amendment to this submission relates to J.A. Flanagan and Lake Charles Stevedores. So we've received the three, we've reviewed and approved those permits, um, and Let's if if we receive the other two prior to December 31st, we will review, request any additional documentation we would need for those permits to be approved, and then with your approval uh, tonight, we will we'll approve that authority, you know, approve that submission, approve that permit. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve submission 2022-065. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Dorber and a second by Mr. Crelo. Before we uh, go any further, however, uh, we do have a public comment form from Mr. Loftus with Gulfstream Marine. Uh, Mr. Loftus, I understand you don't necessarily want to speak to the matter unless there was any questions, but since there was an amendment to this, I just want to give an opportunity if you want to address the fact that the motion uh, or the submission was amended. Fine. Okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, are there any further discussion or questions before the uh, motion is called? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, that brings us to submission 2022 066. Uh, the operating non, uh, non operating and capital budget. Yes, uh, board approval is sought to adopt the 2023 operating, non-operating, and capital budgets. I'm going to turn it over to Cameron, who's going to provide an uh, overview of the 2023 budget. So if you don't mind uh, turning your attention to the TVs, I'll go over some, uh, some of the budget information. And feel free to stop me at any time along the way to ask any questions. Now. <laughs> what you got? All right, so on the traffic outlook, uh, most of our tonnages we expect to increase compared to 2022. So this is comparing our forecast three. We, Even though we didn't present it to you all, we did do a forecast, kind of a shorthand forecast three that projected towards the end of 2022. And this compares to what we budgeted for 2023. Um, most, Like I said, most of our tonnages we expect to increase. There's a few items I would like to point out, uh, forest products being one. Uh, that was newer to 2022. 
Um, it was a, we saw a steady inflow, and we, spe we do expect that to continue. Um, there is, in that top portion, other liquid bulk. Uh, Y'all heard me talk about it in my financials throughout the year. Uh, that's the petroleum byproducts. And we do expect that to continue. It's a little more unclear, so we did include that in there. Um, as for BT1, we saw Pet Coke and Bayright return kind of to normal and actually exceed budgeted 2022. We expect it to continue on that route and exceed 2022's forecast as well. Um, overall, we look to handle about 400,000 more tons than we did in 2022, so additional tons are always great, and additional revenue. So Todd, can I ask you, uh, how is the uh, uh, handlers working, the, you know, the cranes working? Uh, the, the cranes at BT1, or, or the at BT1. No, it, it, it's actually working well. It was working really well until today. <laughs> Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I got an email just before the, the board meeting that it's down, but it is working really well. Um, the guys are getting used to it, and um, you know, it's it's definitely our our production has definitely increased. Oh, good. So, great. But, uh, I still want the new ship loader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it has definitely improved. So. Cameron, great. Yes, sir. Before you go move forward, go back. Yes, sir. On the other break ball. 100,000 tons for 23 versus 27,000 forecast three. What is the major major? Do you remember what all was included in that? I know it included. Uh, it, it's uh, it's project, project cargo. Project cargo. Project cargo. Oh, okay. project cargo. Moving on to operating revenues and expenses. Um, operating revenues, we anticipate budget, we're budgeting about 800,000 more. That's both including vessel and cargo and rental being increased, with a little drop off in other, just due to some uh, dredge spoil charges that we had in 22 that we didn't see in 23. Um, expenses, as expected with the higher cargo, the higher revenues, we expect those to go up as well because with higher operating revenues come some high, more operating expenses. So that's an increase of about 700000 And I do want to mention that included in that increase is some re, a lot of reimbursable expenses related to hurricanes and about 950000 for the Fournette Street property cleanup that is also reimbursable. So about $1.8 million of that increase is actually reimbursable. So it's good news on that end. Um, depreciation is up about 1.5 million, and that's just due to projects being completed throughout the year. They begin depreciating. We include that. So, operating income after depreciation is about 1.3 million. More of a decrease, a loss. Sorry, but before depreciation, we're about 200,000 favorable. So, on the non-operating side. Um, most of the revenues and expenses are relatively in line with what we saw in 2022. The only one item that I want to point out is interest income, which we saw the interest rates start to go up, earning more interest at the end of 2022. We expect that to continue for most of 2023. And our net cash flow budgeted is around $10.6 million, which is about 500000 favorable to 2022. Looking at our capital budget, um, so as Nick mentioned, we have a lot of projects going on, a lot of different funding sources. So looking at the column for 2023, at the very bottom, you see the total that we expect to spend in 23 is about 120 million. Of that, the port funded portion is only about 41 million. So a lot of that's coming from port priority, capital outlay, um, FEMA, the other sources includes FEMA, the SWLA Recovery Fund, HMGP, and DOTD. So a lot, of, a lot of funding sources. And this also continues through the future years, which includes 2024 through 2027. So you'll see a lot, of, a lot of funds coming from other sources and hopefully only a little bit coming out of our 
our, our bank account. <coughs> Any questions on that? And you can see a, in the, in the uh, board book, you can see a breakdown of every project we have included in that. So this is a kind of a continuing explanation of what you just saw. We have the continuing capital projects. This does not include minor projects, but our continuing projects, you know, that were already going on before 2023 started, we're projecting to spend about 114 million, and then new capital projects for 2023. It's only 2.4, 2.5 million. So a lot of these projects that you see throughout this book are continuing from prior years, mostly hurricane related. And this is a breakdown of our minor projects by department. Again, in your packet on the last page, you can see what exactly makes up these projects. So those are our minor projects. And then this is a breakdown of our cash outlook for 2023. So as of today, or as of end of month November, we had about 119 million in, in our bank account. Um, a portion of that is restricted. You can see the six lines that are restricted funds. And then include, we added our cash flow, uh, subtracted out our debt service and our capital spending, which is the 2023 ports portion of, of the capital spending and our unrestricted investments at year end next year, we expect to be around 48 million. So still a healthy bank account. Any, I believe that's it. Any questions on the budget? Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move adoption of uh, 2022-066 approving the 2023 operating and non-operating budget. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Crelo, second by Mr. Prudum. Any additional questions or, or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is are the beginning of the briefing notes. Uh, we have the November financials. Y'all get to hear me talk a lot today. Do what? I said y'all get to hear me talk a lot today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Need some water? <laughs> Got it right here. Save some for FEMA. <laughs> I got notes for that too. <laughs> um, on the financials for the end of month, November 30th, 2022, we generated revenues of about 4 million, which was 1.1 million favorable. As we've seen over the past couple months, Pet Coke and Bayride are, are doing great, earning great revenue. Uh, expenses were around 3 million, which was 600,000 unfavorable. Again, higher tonnages, higher operating expenses. Um, Non-operating revenues, we actually generate, we yielded an expense of about 1.4 million. And that's 1.6 million unfavorable. That's primarily due to the timing of the Port Wonder payment. So Port Wonder project starting to move forward. We made our first payment of 500,000 and we'll have two more payments of 500,000 as the project moves forward. We also had some write-offs of obsolete equipment and structures uh, that uh, push that expense even higher. This is primarily Trader Shed 7. Right. That was right. demolished. Yeah. Um, EBITDA was about 800,000 and we generated about 1.4 million in cash flow. Um, on the balance sheet, kind of the same thing we've heard all year. Hurricane recovery is driving cash down, fixed assets up, government receivable up and construction in progress up. The P3 is driving restricted cash up and current liabilities up. Insurance premiums, bringing that cash down. FEMA and GOSET bringing cash up and government receivables down. Um, not much new on there, but ready for a new year. So I have new things to talk about. Anything else? Any, Any questions? questions? <coughs> you can move into FEMA. All right. Um, Kind of the same thing we've seen the past few months. Uh, project totals fluctuating a little bit here and there. Um, one thing I do want to mention is the project eight through 14, the back warehouses that we plan to tear down and build one large warehouse. That project has been obligated and that's that obligated increase of about 3 million. And further on that, I know you wanted us to mention kind of some of the projects that are 
on standby being held up a little bit. So we have four, five, and sheds four, five, and six. Uh, is, it's going through technical review with the CRC, and they're currently reviewing for our 50% rule. So we've been getting questions, kind of answering follow-up questions. So it is going through the process, and we're working on getting that one approved. And another big one is our unloaders. The first unloader actually, I think Thursday, you said last Thursday? Thursday got pushed through uh, in their peer review process, which means it's getting closer to approval at approximately 19 million. That'd be um, significant for us. Yes, very. And with that being said, we're also moving forward with the second unloader, which was kind of being held up until the first unloader was kind of through the process. We knew what to expect. Now we're pushing that one through. There's also a, a lot of smaller projects that are moving through the process relatively quickly, so we can start to see a little bit of inflow from those smaller projects, maybe not as large as we would like, but any money is good money. So. Anything Questions or comments? <laughs> <laughs> Ran out of material? No, not yet. I got my admin report. All right. <laughs> I can Moving go through to department them. reports. All right. Other than preparing the budget information, uh, we've been working thoroughly with representatives from Gallagher, including uh, some of their reps from London. They came in and they work very close with the London underwriters in an effort to get the best possible policy, uh, property policy for 2023. We expect to start seeing quotes this week, and we'll obviously be binding, make a binding decision next week. So. Cameron, what, what kind of that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to go up. I'm here. We 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 do think it will go up. We're hoping right. they can you know make some adjustments and get it in line at least with 2022. But the market's not looking good right now. They keep reiterating that, and I don't like to hear it. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. I do have a quick question on the uh, just in your written comments. I noticed on the week of 11, 28, and then again on. The there were a couple of accidents and is that stevedore related or is that port employee accidents Let's see. which one 1128 you had two 11, on this week 1128 um, and I've met with with UP to discuss that and we're trying to put in some uh, policies and procedures to keep that from happening again our locomotive was stationary. We were not moving. <laughs> they alighted with us. Yep. So there was no collision. It was a, an elision. <laughs> I just, I guess the frequency was the reason I was asking to understand yeah. if there's something in our safety needed to be addressed or is this Steve wasn't our fault. So, huh? <laughs> Out of our this control. Was UP. Out of your one. control. <laughs> this was a Union Pacific <laughs> locomotive. That's, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Channing, navigation. Mr. President, other than my written report, uh, I'd like to tell you that we uh, started a project in 2017 working with the Corps of Engineers to get the permanent disposal easements we need in disposal areas 12A and 12B. Uh, those disposal sites are on the east bank of the river, uh, right at the industrial canal. Uh, five years later, I'm happy to tell you that the landowner has accepted the offer that the Corps made to them. Uh, we found that out late last week. So barring any uh, problems in the details of getting the, this uh, payment made, uh, we should, should be able to secure uh, the easements we need. And these two disposal sites are very vital uh, to the Corps' ability to keep the, the, the uh, channel open because that area is right at the confluence of the Intercoastal and the Calcasieu River, and that's one of the higher shoaling areas uh, along the river. So we're going to, the Corps is going to uh, proceed to rebuild uh, the sites, uh, 12A was taken out of service a couple of 
years ago because it's in such bad shape. So that'll be the first one to be rebuilt and then they'll start working on 12B. That's all I have uh, other than to answer questions. Any questions for Channing? Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Todd, uh, yes, sir. Uh, one, uh, I would like to, to uh, make mention of, of one of um, Cameron's slides that he had in the financials is the traffic forecast uh, through the year um, through November um, year to date comparing to November of 2021 um, cargo is up 20.35 percent. We're right at uh, 2.9 million tons that have moved through the port uh, through November. Uh, recently at uh, City Docks, we've been handling a lot of aluminum hydrate barges. There was one bulk rice shipment and that there was a barge that was loaded at the Industrial Canal. Uh, we also did uh, one sodium hydrosulfate ship. Currently there's a lumber ship that's being discharged at City Docks that includes um, some steel as well. And we've got between now through February, we're anticipating about 130,000 cubic meters of lumber to be imported between now and the end of February. Uh, we've got, we did, got five barges of hydrate coming in. We've got um, another barge that is scheduled to be loaded at the Industrial Canal. And we have one bag rice shipment of super sacks that's being loaded. It's been here for a while. At BT-1, we're currently loading a coke ship, and, uh, and recently we did a rutile, two other coke ships, and a calcine barge. Including the ship that's loading right now, we're going to do about another 83,000 tons, hopefully before the end of the year, of raw coke. A rutile ship that's 10,000, and a calcine ship that's uh, about 9,000, and two more barges. So we're going to be busy to the end of the year. We'll shut down um, at 1800 on Christmas Eve, and we'll start back up at 07 on the 26th. Yes, and we'll follow that same schedule. We'll shut down at 1800 on New Year's Eve and start back up at uh, 07 January 2nd, ring in the new year. Todd, uh, we're going to get some cold weather here pretty quick. Uh, is that going to hold up anything? Uh, it's, pro it's, a, it's an issue. It's something we just have to deal with, you know, especially the way we're having to work now um, with the ship's gear and with the mobile harbor crane. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to uh, be careful, obviously, with the ice slipping and some things. But uh, we'll work and do as much as we can. We, we don't have much choice right now. We've got too much safety first. Safety first. So. Any other questions? Don? Uh, Terrence? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, in addition to all the cargo, we've had a lot of recent interest in our industrial canal property. Uh, the first uh, weekend of this month, we hosted the uh, second largest European renewables company. And uh, they sent representatives from Germany, uh, Boston, uh, Houston, as well as Louisiana. Uh, last week, we had a separate group uh, interested in our industrial canal property. And they're looking to take uh, natural gas and convert it into blue hydrogen. And uh, we're currently working with a consulting firm out of Texas who represents a party interested in building a renewable plant. So we should get more details on that next week. And they're planning to visit the uh, first part of uh, next year. Uh, and also I've been reviewing the uh, 2023 permits for uh, Stephen Orion line handlers, tugboats, as well as uh, the vessel agents. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions? Thank you, Terrence. <coughs> Engineering, Mick and Nick. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, I hopefully have a video for you. If uh, you can start that for me, Donald. It's just a quick time lapse, only 60 seconds long, showing birth two and three construction to date. So this is from the project start to, to now. Hit play on it there, Donald. There we go. Nick, so, why don't playing describe the apron and what they're doing? Sure. So the uh, the apron out front, you can see we left part of the structure there. That was rehabbed and reconstructed back uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck, but it's around 2003. Yeah. Um, and so that we left that in place since it was solid and newer construction. So you can see we demoed everything behind it. And they're actually doing it in two different strips. So you have your waterfront, or over the water, I should say, and then behind the bulkhead. So they have two different crews <coughs> driving piles. Uh, everything on the in front of the bulkhead, they're able to reach from their, their ringer crane, which is the one on the barge, and then they brought in a land-based crane to do everything on the land side. And here they started forming up the pile caps, uh, and the marine crane, I think, is still in the background there. It actually mowed, it's no longer on site, so they're only left uh, at this point, they're still doing land side piles. And they've got quite a few pile caps forward, now they're starting to form up on the land side, and that is it, like I said, very quick. What, what's the time period on that? That was, uh, it's about January of, what, 2020, 2020, 2022 to now. So yeah, so it's all, a year, essentially. Within a year, yes, yeah. Sir. 11, and they're, uh, 11 months. Yes, sir. So they are having issues, of course, hitting underground obstructions, but they still think they're, they're forecasting to still complete in July, which in is July. on schedule. Yes, sir. Uh, in addition, uh, just you, you mentioned the cold weather, Mr. Prudham. So we actually, after uh, Ice Storm Uri, we instituted a freeze protection plan after we had so many fire sprinkler systems call, have issues freezing. And uh, we have instituted that policy this week, and we have started prepping all of our systems, doing all of our checks, making sure everything's ready to go for the, the cold you, weather coming. You on top of it. We're trying. <laughs> I don't want to fix fire sprinkler lines again. <laughs> And I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Appear to be any. Thank you. All right. Do we have any lobbying reports? We don't uh, have any representatives for. I don't see any. Okay. Uh, any other matters have to come before the board? And is there a motion for executive session? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?